Hi, my name's Kate. I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 17th year of teaching. Today, I thought that I would take you guys along for a day in my life. Today is a Friday, so I thought that I would just show you what a typical Friday looks like in my high school classroom. I have my plan period, first period, which on a Friday is nice, and at the same time, I don't like it. It's nice because, you know, I can... You know, it's Friday. Sometimes it's just a little difficult. I can make sure that I've got everything ready. Um, I do spend a lot of my planned time getting my stuff ready for next week. So that's where sometimes I would love to have that plan period on Fridays towards the end of the day. So my third or fourth period. That way, you know, any of the assignments that were given, if there were tests given on Friday, I could just get those graded and not have to carry those over to the weekend. But it's okay. I find a way to make my prep period productive regardless. Regardless. So plan period, first period, and then I see two of my geometry classes. My geometry classes are working on the project for their unit eight. Unit eight has all been all about circles, so central angles, inscribed angles, intercepted arcs, all of that stuff, intersecting chords. So we are going to do this stepping stone project that I have here, and it really focuses on the different types of um, the different parts of the circle that we've learned and it's just create having them create different things so find this measure this draw a diameter find the length of it record it and you know draw a cord that's not a diameter and it really just walks them through how to find everything and at the end they color they are given a template that has the circle already drawn on there for them so they don't have to draw the circle. I did this in my geometry class yesterday as well and it's amazing how many of my kids, high school, sophomores, juniors, seniors, I understand the struggle with a protractor. I get it. That's not something you use all the time, but how many of them cannot use a ruler. Even after I explained to them, okay, we're using centimeters. This is the centimeter side. We're not just going to guess and estimate and say, oh, it's 15 centimeters. If it's 15.2 centimeters, we need to record it as 15.2. And I show them how to do that. And then how many kids come up to me as they're working or raise their hand and I go over to them and they're like, is this 16 centimeters? I'm like, but it, did it even get to the 16? No, it's still over at 15. And so it's every year... I feel like I have to go more and more in detail of how to do some of the more basic skills. Anyway, so I'm going to do that for my first two classes today. And then I'm going to give them their test is coming up next week. So I just have a very basic review that I'm going to give my students for homework. And that's pretty much going to be the class period. So it's more of an independent study session or independent work day for those kids. And then I have my quantitative reasoning class. I don't know what I'm doing with them yet. This is a new class to me. So I typically plan what I'm going to do day of, which is a great reason to have this first hour of prep. I see my quantitative reasoning class at the very end of the day. So having prep before that class is nice because I can just make sure that I've got a lesson planned and what I need. Um, not ideal. I should definitely be planning this well ahead of time, but that's, you know, that's life right now. So um, I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to get a little bit of work done before students come in this morning and I do have to go to my morning hallway duty. First period has just started, so on my prep, gonna really work to get some stuff done today. Um, the last clip you did see a very quick clip of donuts, so they did buy us donuts today, so there is my selection. Oh, I'm gonna eat that donut. I am gonna get, I'm finishing a warm up for my pre calculus kids for Tuesday, and then I'm gonna work on my QR lesson for today. I just got my start of class slides set up. So if you guys are new to my channel, welcome. I start every class with slides that look similar to this. And it just really starts to make sure the kids are ready to go when I start the lesson. So the do now are the things that they need to do. So they turn in their phone. Normally it says turn in or swap phone for calculator. So let me just 
drop you over here for just a second. So here I have a calculator caddy. And unfortunately, let me flip you around. Got a nice glow with the projector back there. So I do have my students pick up or swap their phone for calculators, but unfortunately just before spring break, one of my calculators came up missing. And even though the students are assigned a specific calculator number, so I could say, oh, you know, so-and-so, your calculator's missing. There are so many days where kids are taking the wrong calculator, they're returning calculators for friends, and they're just, it's, it's become a mess this year. I've never had an issue until this year. So I gave the kids in all of my classes a week to just, hey, I understand that it happened. It probably just got dropped in your book bag you're excited for spring break maybe it was even stuck in your folder please look through everything just I don't need to know where it was who had it just make sure that it gets returned by the end of the week and all is good and unfortunately it did not get returned so I told the kids that if they don't get returned that they would lose the calculators because I cannot have these calculators go missing so right now the calculators are gone the students have to provide their own calculator pretty much until the end of the semester unless it magically shows up between now and then. Back to my slides. So they have to turn in their phone and they're going to turn in their homework and then the supplies that are needed that's really so that you know 10 minutes into class and I'm like okay so on your piece of paper you need to write this and then I don't have paper I don't have a pencil we can get it done at the beginning. We have to write our I can statements because we're doing a project it's a very basic statement and then the today yes usually similar to the I can statements but today definitely a little bit different uh, we're doing a stepping stone project down here I have a timer this is when we have warm-ups uh, where I didn't do a warm-up today we just finished our last set and I'm just gonna wait until the start of our next unit to do that upcoming test dates or due dates so when they have their test I have the date up there and then the meme of the day I do post these up every class, even my pre-calculus and my quantitative reasoning class. At this point, my geometry kids are pretty well trained to check these. Pre-calculus, quantitative reasoning, still working on those kids and they're the ones in the college classes. But anyway, if you guys are interested in a copy of these slides, I do have a link in the description below with um, the link for the copy. So you can go ahead and grab that. I just finished the activity for my quantitative reasoning kids today. We are wrapping up our linear part of our function unit and so I have from Ivy Tech that this is kind of that the class that they're getting for Ivy Tech credit so I use their textbook and we're just going to be looking at a bunch of different like real world examples talking about scatter plots and how we can use a linear model to help interpret and make predictions on those so there's a little bit of information we may not get into it today about using Excel for this they are going to be doing a college trend product project where we will be making these linear regression models so the students may not get into the Excel until we start that project. But there's a bunch of different types of examples here that they're going to work on so it'll probably be okay you guys do the first page we'll quickly go over the answers clear up any questions that you guys have do the second page and then kind of rinse and repeat type situation so I've got about 15 minutes before my prep period is over and I have my first geometry class so I'm just going to get all my supplies set out make sure that I'm ready for class you are going to label the center of your circle a and then find the length of the radius. Anytime it tells you to label something, that's gonna not go on this paper, that is going to go on your stepping stone itself. Right here, this is your stepping stone. So you're gonna find the center of it and you're gonna put an A. If that's the center of your circle, put an A right there, right? When it says find the length of the radius, I do not put that on here the numbers all go on here, okay? Again, no numbers are gonna go on here. You're gonna draw the diameter on your circle, not on the green paper, okay? Label the line segment BC. You're gonna do that on your circle, not on the green paper. Find the length of BC, don't have to use a ruler, and record the length. The length goes on this paper, okay? So numbers go on here, your letters, your lines, your segments, your radius, whatever you're drawing, goes on the circle and then draw a chord that is not a diameter, label the segment, find the length of DE and record the length of that. And then you're gonna color your design, neatness, points, organization, coloring, all of that stuff is where you're getting points for this. Feel free to, as you're creating this, so let me show you guys a sample of what it's gonna look like. Not everybody's is gonna look the same. Every single person's is going to look different. Nobody's will look like mine. If I did this again, it would also not look like this one again. Bless you. 
Right. So you can color each segment different colors. You can draw different designs and all of those. I've had a lot of people, you know, with a garden stone, so they did, you know, garden themed things up here, right? So lots of different ideas for how to color this, but you do get points for the neatness of all of this. So make sure you guys keep that in mind. So a couple of reminders. We're not using the inches side. We're using the centimeter side. So find the side that says CM. So I know you guys can't see the other end of the ruler, but I made sure that zero was at the other end. Okay. I can't say 10.5. It's close to 10.5, but it is it 10.5. No. 10.7 is here, which is outside my circle. 10.6, 10.65, so we can round to the nearest hundred. So it's definitely between 10.5, and, or sorry, 10.6 and 10.7, but 10.7 is definitely outside of my circle. So I'm gonna take this one, which is kind of right on the, at least the thicker part of the circle. So I would say 10.6 for this one, right? Because 10.7 is outside, that's too long. That goes way over here, which is out. I want it to measure as close to being on the circumference as possible. That's hard. So this is the angle that we're gonna look at right here. I wanna measure this angle. So 69, 70, 71? Not 71. Why not 71? Because that's not even on the line. Okay, so, well why, okay, then how about 110 or 109 or 111? It's a small, it's not bigger than 90. But I see 110 right there. Why? Because it's not an obtuse angle. Okay, so using logic should it be over 90 degrees should it be a hundred and something degree angle no so why am i looking and getting 110 right there okay so our protractors get red on both sides right zero all the way to 180 this way and then zero all the way to 180 that way where was my angle starting when it opened it started right here right i'm measuring from this angle so this is the zero that i have to start with here and I'm reading up. I've got two classes down, one to go. It is lunchtime, so I'm just multitasking right now. And I'm getting ready to eat lunch. I just brought a frozen dinner for lunch today. Normally I have salad, but running out of that. So frozen dinner, um, I don't know, doesn't look all that great, but we're gonna eat it. And I am going to just relax a little bit, watch YouTube videos. So I am watching, um, I'll have to insert the name of that channel right here, but it is a mom and her young daughter who's about 11. They are through hiking the Appalachian Trail. I don't know why, but I really enjoy watching through hikes of the Appalachian Trail. So I'm going to go ahead and get my lunch eaten, watch a little bit of this, and then I have one more class today. I had, I'll have to see if I can find it. While you guys are working on the next, so I'm going to find a video if I can, um, for you guys to watch that really talks about this, that kind of helps understand, okay, even though we see this really strong trend, it doesn't mean that one thing has to be affecting the other. Okay, so we will come back to that part. All right, so number five, 31.5, 30, let's try that again, 39.1% of Hoosiers owned a handgun in 2013. Use the linear model, so now we're using the actual line part, to predict the expected firearm death rate in Indiana. So if according to the actual line, what would the death rate be in Indiana? And we have our equation right here. So it does give us that hint. That's what, um, right, Kayla, right? You were asking, what does it mean when it says, don't forget to convert the percentage to its decimal form before using the equation. So. Instead of putting in 39.1%, what are we going to put in for X? 0.391. Good. And so using that linear model, what did we predict the number of deaths to be in Indiana? 0.6854. Okay. So about 12.17 or about 12.2 per 100,000. So we want to make sure we specify that it's not just 12 people in Indiana. It's 12 people for every 100,000 people in Indiana are expected to die because of firearms or due to die due to firearms in India. Please. Well, what can I take my death? No, no, no. Can I have my family get Nope, definitely what? can't do that. That's kind of illegal. That's a point, Misty. And then have your family all go to jail. And I get to You would also be in jail. 
And then I would get the benefits. Okay, actually, let's go. Just kidding. Don't do it. Don't do it. All, all right, and then the last one. How does the actual firearm death rate of 13.4 compare to the predicted value in number five? Yeah, so we're almost a point off. So we're almost one for every 100,000 people off. So, you know, we missed that 100, one in 100,000 every single time. So sorry, Kaylee, you were that one we missed. <laughs> but if, looking at this, it's a pretty good predictor for Indiana. Would it have been, what does LA stand for? Not Los Angeles. Louisiana. Okay. It's like cricket. Would it be a good predictor for Louisiana? No. No, it would predict way low. What about for, it doesn't even label half of these. How about what is SD? South Dakota. South Dakota. Yes. Would it be a great predictor for South Dakota? No. No, because it's way low. Um, what about Illinois? Is it a good predictor yeah. for Illinois? Pretty decent. What about Kentucky? Where? Oh, I see. Uh, it's no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, right it's a great predictor for Kentucky. They probably use Kentucky to help them, you know, come up with this line. So that would give them a pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Wyoming. Oh, yeah, this Wyoming. Is sponsored by Kentucky. This is probably. <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to have you guys. We're going to start talking about. Um, some more information that you guys will like about leasing cars, and then you guys will get to the happy widget company is doing things. So go ahead and answer the questions on the next page, and then we'll go over those in a few minutes. To warn you about the dangers of ice cream. You may not be aware of this, but these innocent looking cones full of sweetness are one of the major causes of drownings. And I've got the numbers to prove it. So if you plot a graph of the number of ice creams that are sold, and you compare it with the number of drownings, you can see there is clearly an upwards trend. And I think it's very safe to conclude from this that we should ban ice cream because it's very dangerous. The day's over, so um, you guys saw a little bit of a glimpse into my last class. We definitely got off track a little bit, but it was good things that the kids were asking about. Some of the information when they ask me, I'm like, I really have no idea. Sometimes I'll try to give my best guess. Sometimes it's like, yep, don't know. Why don't you guys look it up and then report back to us the next class. So this class, I really like the quantitative reasoning. There's a lot of just real world type of math situations in there. So anyway, I'm going to get packed up in about 10 minutes and get going home. So if you guys liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with my journey of teaching high school, please subscribe. I do upload videos every Friday, but you can hit that notification bell to be notified the next time a video goes live. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.